GameStop stock skyrocketing today, soared as much as 110% before falling. And trading was halted multiple times because the stock was so volatile. We'll tell you more coming up on Business Matters. Good afternoon and thank you very much for joining me here today. I'm Don Ma. Uh, we're starting off with markets right now. S&P 500 closed barely changed today. Investors uh, may be potentially taking a breather now after three weekly gains. Uh, and they're also awaiting key inflation data readings this week. So also earnings reports, uh, important ones are due uh, this week as well. Stocks, you know, are just kind of stuck in this uh, really tight trading range until we get some more information on inflation trends. Now, specifically, investors were awaiting the consumer price index data out Wednesday, and they'll also be monitoring uh, producer price index data, retail sales data, weekly jobless claims, and earnings reports from big retailers, for example, Home Depot and Walmart. All right, our top story today, GameStop shares soaring after Roaring Kitty posted online for the first time in roughly three years. He's the man who inspired the epic short squeeze of 2021. Let's go to NTD Sean Marshall now for more information. Shares of video game retailer GameStop surged double digits on Monday. This comes after Rowan Kitty returned to social media platform X after a three-year hiatus from social media. Keith Gill, known as Roaring Kitty on YouTube, is credited with sparking the 2021 meme stock rally that shot GameStop stock up 21-fold over two weeks just before it crashed back down again. And this just seems like a short-lived stock. If you look at the stock price, it's already peaked out today. Trading in GameStop shares were also halted multiple times on Monday to address extraordinary market volatility. Seasoned money manager Vijay Morolia gave his opinions on the stock. Full disclosure, we've taken a small, short position, and we hope to increase that because we do not understand how the company is going to make money outside of perhaps real estate that may not be listed um, at a market value. And so we have our analysts trying to uncover that right now. Short sellers typically borrow stocks to sell them and make a profit by buying back later when the price falls. I asked Morolia if Roaring Kitty's recent posts suggest a return of the retail investor frenzy we saw back in 2021, or if something different is at play here. I think that the word frenzy is a, a good word to use because Sean, what's happening is this is more about sentiment than it is about dollars and cents. And it's not about fundamentals. This is about promotion. This is about getting back at the powers that be, so to speak. But if you look at the company, it's not a good business. They're losing $200 million a year. The revenues are not growing in an economy that is growing. On Monday, no GameStop shares were available for borrowing on a trading platform, Interactive Brokers, a Berlin-based trader confirmed. Sean Marshall, NTD News. A number of major airlines are taking legal action against the federal government. A lawsuit from the carriers and industry lobby, Airlines for America. They claim that the Department of Transportation exceeded its authority with the rule that requires airlines to disclose all of its fees. So the airlines involved here in the suit are Alaska, American, Delta, Hawaiian, JetBlue, and United. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says uh, the rule change benefits consumers overall. Uh, the agency estimates travelers would save half a billion dollars annually. But airlines, on the other hand, uh, Airlines for America, that is, in a statement says the new DOT rule change will complicate the ticket buying process. It calls it an alleged attempt to, quote, regulate private business operations. Another investigation has been launched into Amazon's self-driving robo-taxi union, Zooks. This comes after two of its vehicles suddenly braked and were rear-ended by drivers. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says it's going to look into the performance 
of the automated driving systems at the time of the crash. The agency will also review how the system acts in crosswalks and around other vulnerable people on the road. Zooks was already under investigation. The, the uh, NHTSA has been looking into the company's certification that its vehicles meets uh, federal safety standards. Amazon acquired Zooks in 2020, and analysts are estimating that the tech giant paid over $1 billion for it. Meanwhile, voting is underway at a Mercedes-Benz uh, in Alabama. 5,200 employees at the assembly plant and nearby battery factory will have the opportunity to cast ballots this week to join the United Auto Workers Union. And the final results are expected on Friday. Now, a win for the union would be significant. Uh, first of all, the factory is deep in the American South, which has historically resisted unions. Uh, second, the union is hoping to build momentum as it works to organize more than uh, a dozen automakers across the, uh, across the nation. The UAW just won a union vote at Volkswagen in Tennessee, by the way. But Mercedes has been urging workers to vote no, uh, according to reports by Reuters. Uh, Mercedes rejects that claim. And as well, Apple Store workers in Tosa, Maryland voted in favor of authorizing a strike over the weekend. That's according to a statement by the union representing the workers. And the union is called the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers. Uh, and it said that the issues at, at, at play here include concerns over work-life balance, unpredictable scheduling practices, disrupting personal lives, and wages that don't align with the area's cost of living. And an Apple spokeswoman said the company will engage with the union respectfully and in good faith. Um, also on a side note here on Saturday, Bloomberg reported that an Apple store in New Jersey voted against unionizing. All right, Uber and Lyft sued again, once, a time, once again in court. This time, Massachusetts wants their drivers classified as employees. Here's more on that. Uber and Lyft sued again. Massachusetts Attorney General Andrea Joy Campbell says their drivers should be classified as employees instead of independent contractors. The potential impact of this case is big uh, because if Uber loses, it could mean higher fares for riders and maybe even a shortage of drivers who prefer the flexibility of being contractors. Tech expert Wasim Mirza says Uber and Lyft could, as a result, see their profits shrink. The companies may then invest less in new features and there would be fewer services. But on the flip side, this lawsuit could push companies to develop self-driving cars much faster. Uber and Lyft faced similar lawsuits from California and New York. Both states failed to make them classify drivers as employees. They are still following the old script of labor laws and all that. They need to move up and catch up with the new reality where people want flexibility, people want freedom. Tech analyst Santosh Rao is an early investor in Uber and Lyft. He says drivers wanted the freedom of switching between Uber and Lyft and working whenever they want. He says being classified as an employee comes with too much baggage. Unions want all these people to be part of employers, employees, so they can include them in unions. Uh, then. Uh, the states want more money as well. They're guaranteed they pay into this system. Rao believes Uber and Lyft will win again. Attorney General Andrea Joy Campbell says under state law, drivers are employees and are entitled to benefits such as minimum wage, overtime, and sick time. NTD reached out to Campbell but didn't hear back before airtime. This is Dave Martin for NTD News. Now, Everyone is getting hit hard by inflation, but reportedly it's actually worse for Gen Z. Uh, that's according to a study from the credit reporting agency TransUnion. It looked at the credit usage of Americans between the ages of 22 to 24 years old and found that uh, they're earning less money, uh, have more debt and higher rates of delinquency compared to millennials when they were at that age. So not only have Gen Zers had to deal with the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic early in their careers, but also had to deal with sticky inflation that has driven up the cost of basic necessities like food and gas. 
Now, soaring interest rates have also hiked borrowing costs for auto and student loans, as well as sky-high home mortgages. And U.S. regulators are warning that the mortgage industry could actually intensify the next recession. The Financial Stability of Oversight Council says non-bank mortgage companies like Rocket Mortgage, as well as Penny Mac and Mr. Cooper, have an increasing influence in the industry. Now, unlike traditional banks, these companies aren't heavily regulated and are vulnerable to swings in the market. They also don't have stable deposits to rely on as a safety net. Federal regulators are calling on states and Congress to address these risks. They want to create an industry-funded backstop to help when a mortgage company goes under. Now, according to the uh, Oversight Council, as of 2022, non-bank mortgages owned uh, their servicing rights of 54% of mortgage balances. So, you know, with earnings season almost wrapping up here, I thought uh, perhaps it would be a good idea to take a look, at, look back and see how it performed. And so I spoke to the chief analytical officer at S&P Global Ratings, Greg Lemos Stein. Greg, thank you so much for your time today. So most of uh, earnings this quarter have uh, come out already. My question to you first off is how did companies perform overall? What we're seeing in aggregate, Don, and thanks for having me, what we're seeing in, in our review of all of the earnings that we see of, of entities that we rate, that we have a rating, um, credit rating, is that our earnings are pretty sluggish. They're sort of flatlining to even declining. And that indicates to us that uh, the central bank actions are, are having their expected effect, that the punch bowl is being taken away from the party. Uh, it's not a completely negative story across the board. So even though overall we see sales down 2% overall and EBITDA, a key measure we look at, uh, down 6.8%, if you exclude some of the more volatile commodity sectors, it's a bit more positive, uh, up 1.9% for sales and up 1.7% for EBITDA globally. Now, that's nothing to write home about, but at least it's positive growth. But clearly, uh, there's there's uh, less growth than there was even uh, a year or two ago. So you mentioned uh, the central bank. I mean, what are some of the other factors that uh, contributed to the earnings decline? Maybe perhaps uh, the, cons the consumer is not on very solid footing. What are your thoughts? The consumer has been sort of the savior for so long, uh, and companies have been able to pass on costs, and, uh, and the consumer has been more resilient than I think anybody, we or anybody would have thought. But... Uh, it's not unlimited. So I think the consumer is showing some fragility. We're seeing that as we speak uh, in the first quarter results, even anecdotally since then. So our analysts covering consumer facing sectors such as retail are noting the softness there, uh, which is globally, but also very pronounced in the US. So that's a factor. I think another key factor done is uh, labor costs. They're still uh, high, it's sticky. Um, that's something that's why the central bank has, has paused its plans for rate cuts, but uh, certain sectors where labor is a big proportion of, of the cost structure and where uh, there's a high reliance on lower cost labor, medium, medium, uh, minimum wage jobs, uh, there's still a lot of pressure there and margins are being squeezed. Any sectors that standing out in terms of their performance relative to others? Yeah, absolutely, Don. It's it's uh, definitely sector by sector, not aggregate. So we see sectors like uh, defense on one hand, aerospace and defense doing quite well. Technology with all the AI spending uh, doing quite well. And also travel, gaming, and leisure sectors uh, still, still recovering, still doing quite well uh, year over year as people open up their uh, purse strings for more of that type of activity. On the other hand, as I mentioned, the commodity sectors uh, have the weakest year-over-year -year performance in terms of sales and profitability. But but that's really a function of the very, very strong 2023 for a lot of commodity sectors. So weakness, but we have to remember that it's coming from a, a relative strong place in terms of commodity costs. And I would highlight even uh, amongst the commodity areas, chemicals has been particularly weak. And we've seen a lot of credit rating downgrades in the commodity sector, uh, in the chemical sector because of uh, various headwinds. One other sector that has to be mentioned that's particularly weak has been real estate. And that's uh, you know been a story for the last couple of years as people are, are working from home and office uh, utilization is very, very low still. 
and interest rates being high is sort of a double whammy for real estate, particularly office real estate. So from where you're standing, are earnings uh, looking to improve here? Uh, well, again, it's sector by sector. I think the, the fundamentals are pretty good. It's not across the board. You can't paint it all with one broad brush. But I think most sectors are in an okay place with earnings. Uh, it's just that uh, they're also facing the interest rate uh, conundrum. So again, it's it's really a differentiation between the higher rated, lower leverage credits and the uh, spec rate credits, which have a, a lot of debt to work through. All right. Thank you very much, Greg Lemostein, S&P Global Ratings. Thanks for your time today. Thank you, Don. All right. What else is happening today? It looks like uh, Melinda French Gates will be stepping down as the co-chair of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Uh, an organization, by the way, she has been with since 2000, 24 years. So the separation deal with her now ex-husband calls for her to get another $12.5 billion for charity works. French Gates uh, says she will donate funds toward groups that are focused on women and families. Now, in a social media post, French Gates said that uh, she is very proud of the foundation and the, quote, extraordinary work it is doing to address inequities around the world. Uh, Bill Gates issued a separate post saying that he is sad to see Melinda leave, but says she will continue to have a huge impact. Uh, the Gates divorced in 2021, by the way. And coming up after the break, China will be issuing one trillion yuan of special government bonds. Officials say funds will be used to stimulate st uh, sluggish sectors of the economy. And as well, ChatGPT maker OpenAI says it's going to release a new AI model with more advanced capabilities, for example, being able to interact across text and vision. We'll tell you more on that after the break. All right, welcome back. Thanks for sticking around here. Just some quick headlines for you to keep you up to date uh, for today. Website design from Squarespace is going private in a $7 billion deal. This comes just after three years of Squarespace going public. Private equity firm Primera has made an all-cash offer for the website platform. Meanwhile, mining company Anglo-American has rejected rival BHP's beefed-up takeover bid. At $43 billion, this would have been the biggest mining deal on record. Now, the new push shows BHP's eagerness to get deeper into copper as the metal is expected to rise. And as well, OpenAI has unveiled a new advanced AI model. The artificial intelligence company says it's going to release new software and it's going to be called GPT-40. The company says it is capable of realistic voice conversation and it is able to interact across text and vision. So in a live stream earlier today, OpenAI demonstrated how users can speak to the new model and get real-time responses. All right, we're going to cover some China stories now. The country will start raising money to stimulate the economy. This is going to be with its long-awaited long-term special treasury bonds this week. The finance ministry confirmed that it will be issuing 1 trillion yuan of special government bonds. That's more than $138 billion. China says uh, the funds will be used to stimulate key sectors of its sluggish economy. And China's very ambitious economic growth target of 5% in 2024 may just be the reason as to why Beijing turned to special treasury bonds to promote growth. Now, today's bond announcement came after news over the weekend that a broad measure of China's credit in April unexpectedly fell for the first time since 2005. And the special treasury bonds were first announced during China's parliamentary con conference in March. Also, 75-hour work weeks, still a problem here for some workers supplying Chinese fast fashion giant Xi'an. That's what a new investigation is suggesting. A Swiss advocacy group, Public Eye, interviewed employees last year at 13 factories. And this is a follow-up to its 2021 probe, uh, which found staff across sites in China's Guangzhou province were working excessive overtime here. 
So in the report interview, he said that they worked 12 hour days on average, uh, not including meal breaks, that is. And they said they worked six to seven days a week. Shein's code of conduct for its suppliers caps work hours to 60 per week, including overtime. So in response to the new report, Public uh, Eye uh, said, uh, Shein said in part that uh, this was not a problem unique to Shein, it added that it was committed to uh, playing its part to improve the situation in its supply chain. As well, Chinese companies have won more bids to explore for oil and gas in Iraq. Uh, they are the only foreign players to be awarded bids so far, actually. The Middle Eastern country is issuing oil and gas licenses for nearly 30 projects. Iraq's oil minister announced that five more bids went to Chinese companies. This brings China's total to 10. Uh, Iraqi Kurdish company Car Group took two bids, and no major U.S. companies have been involved in that. So the main goal of the exploration licenses is to ramp up output for domestic use. Iraq wants the natural gas to fire the power plants uh, that rely heavily on imported gas from Iran. All right, well, moving on from China to geomagnetic storms that brought dazzling, dazzling colors to areas um, that rarely see it, by the way. Um, so it did cause some chaos. The New York Times reports uh, navigational systems and farming equipment broke down over the weekend. The equipment including tractors uh, that use GPS to plant precise rows to avoid gaps and overlap. So Landmark Implement, this is a John Deere dealer in the Midwest. It warned that farmers uh, about the disruptions, uh, and this is by, bad timing, by the way, because it is the height of the planting season in the Midwest and Canada. And the iconic Porsche 911 is going hybrid. Its gas engine will be assist assisted by at least one battery-powered electric motor. Porsche is set to officially unveil the 911 hybrid in an online event on May 28th, and the company already sells plug-in hybrid vehicles. But this is another matter entirely, because the 911 defines the Porsche brand and is one of the most recognizable sports cars in the world. So having a hybrid version of it likely could help support the acceptance of electric motors. Uh, Porsche won't say that if the 911 hybrid will be a plug-in, um, as past and current Porsche hybrids have been. The company has favored plug-in hybrids because uh, their more powerful batteries add to performance. All right, that's all the stories we have for you today. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have any feedback for the episode, feel free to let me know. Uh, you can email us at business at ntd.com or leave a comment online. I do read the comments for every episode. And speaking of reading comments, uh, I got a comment from a viewer recently. Vanessa, I'd like to give you a special shout out here. Uh, thanks for your email and appreciate your support. That's all for today's episode. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.